Yeah, hello, I'm Retro Jules. Have you seen World of Tanks' latest video, the six year developer interviews, the 2020 developer update? The slumbering beast has awakened, the silence has been broken. It sounds like Wargaming have been listening all along. And for those of you who have had concerns about the game, I think this might just lift a little bit of weight. I think part of the frustration for a lot of people was that it felt like Wargaming haven't been doing anything. We haven't had a developer diary video for eight months. We haven't had a map release video for over a year. We haven't had a community clips video from Wargaming for over eight months. And the developer content that we get is about what food they eat and not about the game. And you put it all together and I think for some of us, and me included, because I did say this when I came back to the game, I thought I felt the game felt a little bit unloved and a bit stale. None of us knew what was going on and they have spoken. So if you haven't seen the video, I'm not going to play it now. I'll put a link in the end. I'm sure most of you have seen it. They talk about maps. Hurrah! Two new maps on the way. One is a community driven map and one is a map called Kunas. It's only two maps. It doesn't get rid of perhaps some of the maps we, we don't like or that could be maybe too small for wheeled vehicles. But they are working on maps. they are going to be new tech tree tanks and the focus is going to be on the new Swedish mediums. Crossplay. They are actually physically working on crossplay. PS4 and Xbox One are going to be able to unite on the battlefield as one community. That is brilliant. I have no idea how this affects 360 players, but I must admit, if you're playing on the 360, I'd be kind of concerned now because at the end of this year, the next generation of consoles is going to be out. Wargaming have already said they've got enough funding for another two years at the moment and surely they're not just going to port the game across to the new generation of consoles. They've got to do something with the graphics and with the presentation of the game because if they don't, the game is going to look tired very, very quickly on the new generation of consoles. So I don't know this for sure, but surely they're going to have to drop the 360 and the limits that the 360 has to be able to move this on and combine the communities. Don't know, just just an idea in my head and I think if I was a 360 player I'd be thinking yeah do you know what I've probably had my day on this now and, I, and I, I need to move on to the next console even if you were to get an Xbox One cheap at Christmas that might just save the game for you. And of course you're not going to be able to go and buy the new PlayStation if you're Xbox because your account will not transfer across consoles. If you're Xbox, you're Xbox. If you're PlayStation, you're PlayStation. That's where your accounts are, that's where your tanks are, and you can't swap them over. But the communities will be able to play together. That is brilliant, brilliant news for me because you don't know this, but I started a free to play account on PlayStation, and to be honest, as much as I wanted to play with the PlayStation guys, there was no way I was going to be able to grind enough tanks. I think crossplay will come into action before I've even got anywhere near the higher tiers, and the grind was absolutely killing the game for me. So I might just hold back on that and wait for the crossplay to come in. Tank balance. They've mentioned that they need to look at the balancing of the tanks. We all agree with that. Wheeled vehicles. They are working on wheeled vehicles. It's not a big thing, it's just one single French tank line, but it's going to bring some diversity into the game and some people are groaning already. Fast tanks that use auto-aim, that zip around the map and are really hard to hit. I can't honestly imagine who that might appeal to. Mm, do like my vanguard, you know? So wheeled vehicles are going to be on the way. That is good news. They're going to address matchmaking and team balancing, and especially when you clan up and making sure that that is a level playing field. And they've also mentioned the most important thing, 
which is the most important thing to me as well, because if it wasn't for this, I wouldn't have come back to the channel, and I wouldn't have come back to the tanking. It's all about the community, and they're recognising that a lot of people like to roll out in clans, so they like to have the clan tags in front of them, and they're looking at clan development and perhaps trying to give more to the feeling of a clan and giving it more of an identity, which is actually something that I covered in my What Do You Want From Wargaming in 2020 video. I just thought that clans need just a little bit more love so we can all roll out there together because we are sharing our unity and our love for the game by rolling out under one clan tag. So that's what I've picked up from the video. I feel like this video has been made as a reaction to the community. I don't get the feeling that this video was already pre-made, ready for the six year anniversary. I think they've knocked this up pretty quick because a lot of us, and not all of us, a lot of us have had an awful lot of questions about what are you doing, Wargaming? And I still have one question left now, is that you've got all these people in Wargaming working full time, eight hours a day, on this one game don't really understand why things take quite so long. Why does it take so long to build a map if you've got somebody working on maps eight hours a day, for example? I would just like to know how they prioritise things and really why things do seem to take so long to come out. But this is Wargaming reacting to the community, telling us that they're still there and they are working on the game. And for me, that's a little bit of a weight lifted because the game was perfectly playable, it's still enjoyable, but it just felt unloved. And it's just nice to know that the guys are back there doing something, promising us some great stuff for 2020, and I really hope that does come into fruition. And this kind of makes me excited for the new generation coming and where this game may go next and it's going to have a larger community because it's all going to be actually it's going to be the same size community but they're going to be together in one game in one place really like to know what you think of the video what you've got out of it they didn't mention reskins they kind of touch on premium tanks and how popular they are and premium tanks are popular because people do pay their good earned money to have a tank that is different, to have a tank that they don't have, and some people are quite literally tank collectors, and they will pay 30, 40 quid every time a tank comes out, just to say that they've got all the tanks that exist, and that's always gonna happen. So they haven't addressed perhaps our concerns that you know, the game feels a little bit like it's just a premium tank making machine and sometimes not an awful lot of thought is going into that and they're not amazing tanks, they're like reskins, they're easy cop-outs. So that hasn't been addressed, but we don't always get what we want. Wargaming have reacted to the community. Thank you Wargaming, happy birthday to you and I'm looking forward to the rest of this year. And I hope you are too. Keep safe, keep tanking, and I'll see you soon.